Greetings and salutations everyone! I'm Ekamak, this is Let's Play Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. In the last episode... You know, now that I think about it, the exchange rate on Sabbath does mean that maybe prices aren't as exorbitant as I thought they were. But that said, I prefer saving up for quartz. But yeah, um, in the last episode we finished up in the Grand Salt Sewers, we finished the last ex monster extermination mission. Um, and we went and grinded CP for quite a few minutes. We're now at 200 on everything, so we are safe to start this mission. Probably? I'm not very confident to be honest because... Ooh, Lawrence looks absolutely devastating and these... The Royal Intelligence Division has given us so much trouble in the past. It's almost time for the championship to match to start. Are you nervous? When you're ready, please proceed to the entrance gate. Welcome everyone to the Grand Arena! Please note that tournament participants are asked to remain within the arena's walls until the end of the day's matches. Have you made all the necessary preparations for a day of hot, hot action? Bring it on! Excellent, excellent! Your waiting room is the blue team room, just inside the hall on the right. We're always blue team. Although I suppose Zin was on red team in the first matches, but we weren't on his team at that time, so he doesn't count. Fight well! Looks like it's just us in here. This waiting room feels awfully big right now. Well, it is actually a pretty big room. Team sports, events, and circuses alike are to be held here. Or oh, used to be held here. But that was back in a time when gladiators fighting monsters was a man's only source of entertainment. Interesting. I guess that would explain the size if there were circus animals in here. I must say, it certainly doesn't measure up to an imperial opera house, but even so... It's about the size of an outdoor concert venue, that's certainly acceptable. Excuse us for being less gaudy than you imperialists. I think we may have gone here a little too early though. We've still got a sizable chunk of time before the match starts. Really? I just- oh man! I just started the episode, don't tell me we have to spend 20 minutes waiting. <sighs> waiting around for your match does start to, to start really does get kind of boring. Why don't we walk around the grounds for a little while then? Works for me! We're gonna go out for a walk, guys! Sure, just make it sure you're here in time for the match. Well, what new turn of events is this? I thought for sure you'd go with them. I just get the feeling something's changed between- Ah, oh, great, we're back to this shipping fodder again. I get the feeling something's changed between the two of them. Some type of step forward. Hello, Mr. Observant. We've definitely been feeling some pressure from the matches, but today they seem a lot more relaxed. Oh, to be that young again, eh? But are they ready for the feelings that well up from within them? Even if they are not, the feelings are surely ready for them. <laughs> Such delightful awkwardness. I look forward to what comes of it. So you're the typical anime fan is what we're getting. I guess Olivia had to have some sort of flaw. I just really don't get you. Uh, something wrong? Are you feeling alright? I'm okay, I just got chills all of a sudden. Like someone's talking behind my back. Oh yeah, like someone is talking about us or plotting something. I think I can guess who that is. We aren't allowed in here. Reserved for guests of honor. No unauthorized personnel. I guess that's Duke Dunan's room or something. Oh, actually, um... Shoot! Okay, it's a good thing I made that emergency save because... People watching in front of the mall. I keep thinking about all the different teams. I've decided that in the end I'm just gonna cheer for Joshua, one, my one and only. Are you the crazy cat woman? That would be hilarious to call back, but also disturbing. What? Why are you going to cheer for just one person? Yay! The final round! Who will win? Who will lose? I don't even really care, just yay! 
Violence is cool! Who shall I cheer for? It seems whoever I end up cheering for always loses. So maybe I should cheer for the team I don't want to win! Good old reverse psychology. You haven't failed me yet. Uh, I mean, you totally have. You totally have! Look at all these people. I got up early specifically to avoid the crowds. A lot of good that did. These are the final matchups though, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised by the turnout. I don't care that those special ops guys are Colonel Rich's troops. I don't trust them. That we would even have stormtroopers like that serving the liberal. If you see any Royal Guardsmen, or anyone else who seems suspicious, please let me know. There's this beautiful girl who walks by here all the time. Some days counting how many times I see her is the only way I can keep myself sane. <laughs> if you can call that sane. <laughs> Alright. If that girl walks by here three times today, I'm going to go up to her and say hi. Now I just need that book so I can pretend to be reading it while I wait for her. Because girls like smart bookish men, right? Right? Then Tom gets some weird ideas in his head sometimes, man. Saw this nun I'd never seen before at the cathedral recently. I wonder when she started. Okay, are you carrying the book? That guy standing in front of the market has been staring at me for quite some time now. Makes me very uncomfortable. Oh dear. That girl just walked by here again. Two more times. If that girl walks by here two more times, it means she's the one. What if she doesn't walk by again? Oh man, will she? Won't she? Will she? Won't she? This actually feels like it's gonna lead to something, so let's sit here and wait. And maybe hold down the alt button so that, uh, one more time, if I see that girl one more time, I'll say hello to her. She's like a goddess to me, celestial and untenable, but captivating in her beauty. Holding down alt to make her get here faster. Is she coming? Oh, here she is. Got to be an earshot, or eye shot, or whatever. Oh wait! That guy over there is staring at me. I can feel his eyes on me all the time. He's just so creepy, I don't want to get anywhere near him. Oh, uh, are you braces? What a relief, I feel a lot safer with braces around. Yes, that makes three. I've seen her three times now. I feel like I need to thank someone upstairs. Thank you, thank you, goddess. Thank you, you too, guys. Here, take this as a token of my appreciation. Carnelia Finale. All right, time to man up and say something to her. Standing around all day ogling people, that's just rude, you know? Is she looping around to pass by him again? I'm so going to talk to that lady today! Uh, I guess it's not going to get any closure. Anyway, um... Yeah, we have the book. I'll read it some other time. Replacing my emergency save and just gonna skim ahead through this because I want to make today... I want to make this episode the one where I go through... where I get through all that. Be sure to pick up a copy of the newspaper this evening. 
before it goes out of print. Gotcha, very important stuff after this. Alright, so we've caught up again. Uh, new safety save, just in case. But actually, where would we even want to go? Is something wrong, Kurt? Uh, it's you guys. Because it's time for the final match. Give it all you've got, okay? You bet! You don't look so good there, Kurt. Are you okay? You do seem pale. Uh, just a little lightheaded, that's all. It's kind of odd. I don't feel sick, so why am I lightheaded? I think I'm having a flashback. Flashback? From what, yesterday? No, no, from an accident I had about three months ago. Seems I screwed up on the job and messed myself up pretty bad. What do you mean, scenes? You don't mean amnesia, do you? I do. It's kind of embarrassing, maybe even a bit cliche, but actually I don't remember a thing about it. Well, it didn't anyway. I still can't remember what job I was doing that got me hurt in the first place. The doctor said it wasn't shock or anything, but offered no other explanations as to what it could be. Wow, what a story. You were still okay to participate in the match even in that condition? I told you, physically there isn't anything wrong with me. In fact, I'm feeling a lot better just talking it over with you. And in time, these flashbacks will start to take shape. I'll remember what happened. So don't worry about me, okay? Okay, I guess if you say so. You are starting to look a little better than you did a moment ago. Just be careful though, okay? Thanks. You guys too, good luck out there. We're all here to root for you, for you today. You're representing the Bracer Guild out there, so be sure to make us proud. Hey you guys. Listen, just relax and do what you've always done. There's no pressure. Hey newbies! Your opponents are tough, but you should be able to take them no sweat. I hope so. Break a leg out there, we'll be cheering for you like you wouldn't believe. I wonder who will win. It's going to be amazing. Championship today, woo! I like that blonde boy on the Bracer team. He looks laid back, but he's got such a quick draw. I want to see who the masked guy and the big guy go at it head to head. That'd be something. Everyone came super early because it's the finals. Guess they figured seats would fill up fast. And they did. I wonder who will win. It's going to be amazing. Hey, yeah, uh, we read that one. Hey there, Professor! Estelle, Joshua! Professor? You came to watch us? But of course, you've always been such a big help to me. I owe you at least that much. Thanks, Professor! But how'd you scrape together the mirror for a ticket? We actually know about this. He got it from his boss because his boss couldn't attend. Well, that was a bit of a lucky break on my part, actually. The museum director had some sudden business to attend to, so he couldn't make it today. And I am here in his stead. Should have guessed you'd never be able to get here on our own, out of your own pocket. <laughs> Not that I wouldn't try, of course. I'm sure I could find a way if I put my mind to it. At any rate, I am here, and here I am. I'll be shouting your names for sure. Knock them dead, you too. You bet we will. Thank you, Professor. Two first-year teams making it to the finals, and both boys to win it all. Who will it be? Time to start cheering. Maybe I should have packed a lunch today. I was in line for such an ungodly hour. I'm already hungry again. Grandpa and I love watching the tournament every year. On with the show, your whippersnappers! My husband went through a lot to get us some good seats yesterday. I heard. I can't believe he went through all of that just for me. I was kind of camping out to get some good seats, but the night patrol made me go home. So I did the only sensible thing. I snuck out of the house, hid in my bushes, and waited for the soldiers to leave. Then, BAM! Line City! There's a girl on the bracer team, right? Good for her. If teamwork is the deciding factor, then all oh, special ops have the championship in the bag for sure! Would never predicted the matchups to go in the direction they did. The thing is, it's not a matter of teamwork. The, the special ops team actually haven't been that competent. 
The reason that they've been winning is because they have Lorenz to one-shot everything. I reckon that if Lorenz wasn't a part of the fight against the Sky Bandits, the Kapua family would have won. Hey Estelle! You did it! The final fight! It's so exciting! Deep breaths, Dorothy. Come on now, do it with me. If you don't relax and keep yourself still and focused, you won't be able to get any good shots. Oh, don't you worry about that. I take my best pictures when I'm all hyped up like this. They're more natural, you see? Oh, I guess they would be. Dorothy, I think you're some kind of savant or something. I really think the Special Ops team is a shoe in this year. I mean, just the name Special Ops alone has such an awesome ring to it. The martial arts competition is always so much fun. Every year I get so into it. I'll be cheering for the braces. They're always there to help people when they help when people are in need. I'm gonna shout myself horse! The boy on the bracer team looks about as old as my son. I think I'll cheer for them today. Who'll win, do you think? I hope the match starts soon. I got up extra early so I can rouse these two and get some good seats at the arena. I'd never miss a spectacle like this. Yeah, they're all little kids. I was so excited for today's events, I couldn't sleep one wink. Royal Army vs. Bracer. Both of them fight to protect people as part of their jobs. Now I guess we see who's better at it. Isn't this the wrong room? I'm pretty sure our room is on the right hand side. Oh yeah! Guests of Honor, no one authorized personnel. I wonder what's the trigger point for the matches to be ready to start. Oh! Distel, Joshua, is that you? Bear Klaus! What brings you here? It's good to see you both again. It has been actual years since I've seen you. Sherazad told me you'd gone traveling all over the kingdom. You've certainly grown up nicely in the time since we last met. Thank you very much. Well, I can't speak for myself really. But you certainly seem as chipper as ever, Mr. Mayor. It's kind of refreshing to see. Well, I won't let you young folk beat me just yet. So I hear you two made it all the way to the championship in this big martial arts competition. I may be a little old for such things, but I came to watch! You came all the way from Roland for that? No, no. Actually, I got an invitation out of the blue to a dinner party at Gransel Castle. I only arrived in Gransel this morning, came by way of an airliner. No way! I think I get it. The invitation came from Duke Dunan, right? Oh, you know of it. I was originally planning to attend a birth ceremony for this married couple and then journey here. But this lady officer approached me out of nowhere and told me I was invited to this dinner party. Wait. What if Colonel Richard is... Oh no. What if the true function of the Black Hack Augment at Gospel is to brainwash people like we've been seeing happen to the Kapua family and... Potentially the Mayor Dalmore, but I'm uh, not giving him that much credit just yet. If he gathers up all the mayors once again... Yikes, that's not good. One guess as to who that was. Yeah, it had to be Captain Amalthea. Sadly, my wife's just not much of a travelling sort, so I didn't have much choice but to come here by myself. Aw, oh, she's not here. Pardon me, Mayor. There is a chance we might also be t attending that dinner party. Oh? Estelle and Joshua explained that the Duke had stated that the winner of the competition would receive a formal invitation to the party. Ah, I see. Well, that explains it. Why do they need to have the green text saying Joshua explain to him? I feel like he could just as easily say it in one actual paragraph. Do they just expect it to go on a lot longer than that and shortcut it? Well, that explains it. It hardly seems appropriate to call for a dinner party when Her Majesty is taken ill. But if you two will be there, I might not feel quite so awkward. So that just means you'll have to try that much harder to win. 
You bet! We'll try our best to meet your expectations. I think I'm going to find myself a seat then. Best of luck to the both of you. I think that should be it. I, I can't believe he's going to be at the dinner party too. You think Mayor Maybell will be there as well? It seems likely. There will probably be a lot of influential people in attendance. Hmm. Oh well. We might just need to focus on winning our match and then we'll see everyone there. Sounds good. Speaking of which, it's almost time. Let's return to the waiting room. Okay. Alternatively, the Black Orbman might just be a super weapon of nuclear proportions and that's going to be him showing off. Right, I'm in charge now and if you don't listen then... And then zaps the ocean or something. Or actually, it'll probably be Zaps Du Dunan. That could be you if you don't behave. The time has finally come. Break a leg, you guys. Sins team, you're in the blue team room on the right side of the hall. There are a lot of people watching you out there. No pressure. Just do what you're gonna do and do it well, and good things will come of it. Uh, as much as I hate to have a zero progress episode, I think I might have to have a zero progress episode here. I haven't watched the martial arts competition since I was a young man. Good luck out there, you two. It'll be a short episode, but I think I want to try and stick the actual uh, match into the next episode because it'll also come packing a lot of cutscene if I know this game. So then, uh... Yeah, until next time guys, take care, I'll see you all around. Seven thousand two hundred. Four thousand two sixty. <sighs> and after all this build up, we might just end up being roadblocked. Oh wait, there's something I could actually do for this episode. My bad. We still have some time left, so not really the sort of music you'd want in the background, but Carnelia Finale, a legacy never to be forgotten. The finale to a fictional novel published in Liberal. I was swallowed by the light, only to be spewed moments later onto a patch of hardened ground. The air was filled with a sweet scent of sun-baked earth. Yet, for being the floor of some grandiose heavenly estate inherited by those in the afterlife, it felt quite like the flagstones I had become accustomed to in my past life. Upon feeling around in my immediate surroundings, my searching hand found locks of the soft locks of disheveled hair. It seemed as though Sister Carnelia had come as well in his eye to meet our creator firsthand. Gradually as I lay there, I felt something warm swell within the pit of my stomach. Weary and spent, I just let the feeling spread over me. It was about this time that the sound of murmurous voices started to fill the air around us. Warm breath tickled across my nose and brow, letting me know I was being stared at directly in the face. As my eyes adjusted to the intensity of the light, I realized I was looking into the face of a young girl who beamed back at me brightly with the widest of smiles. However, she seemed a bit young to hold the esteemed position of the goddess. The knell of a bell rang overhead loud and clear. Strangely, it sounded exactly like the cathedral's distinctive toll. Taking in this series of events to be rather odd, I picked myself up and at last awakened from the dream which had temporarily invaded my senses. There it was, the familiar cityscape. The sounds and even the scent of the breeze, they knew the place by heart. It was the public square of the Imperial City which unfolded before the great cathedral of the Septian Church. I opened my fingers of my right hand and stared down at the metallic lump in its palm, entrusted to me by me. Golden filaments of light swirled across the surface of the artifact. I instantly recalled Sister Carnelia's words. It's alive, she had said. And as I watched the ancient light gradually fade away before closing my hand around its surface once more, I believed it. Supporting each other by wrapping our arms around one another's shoulders, Sister Carnelia and I hobbled and limped our way toward the magnificent cathedral as the awe-inspiring figure of the goddess, Idios, stood silently with unfurled wings, watching over us from deep-hued stained-glass window above. And as for the events which followed, they were all settled in an orderly fashion. The metallic lump which Sister Carnelia had so daringly risked her life for was turned over to his eminence, the Cardinal, who presided over the cathedral. He disappeared with it through the thick open door of a sacred vault. 
the level of corruption which had spread like a plague among members of the Imperial Court. Influential aristocrats and even commissioned officers in the Imperial Army astonished even those mediators acting on behalf of the Racer Guild. I stayed close by Sister Carnelia as she was laid out on a pew within the chapel of the cathedral. The real sisters of the church delicately pulled off her coat and cut open her vest, now stuck to her with dried blood. Upon doing so, they found an ornate shirt of chainmail just beneath the layer of her clothing, which for some strange reason seemed to bewilder them all. The next day, a certain aristocrat, who had hired the Chinyega corpse to carry out his selfish bidding, agreed to relinquish the artifacts in his position in return for keeping his estate. Hence, his collection of forbidden antiqu antiques were brought under the safekeeping of the Septian Church. Sworn to secrecy, I made immediate arrangements to, make to, to take leave for the Calvid Republic. My destination, a high-class resort, which turned out to be an excellent way to recover physically and mentally, as well as forget about the series of events which had occurred over the past few days. Naturally, the braces assigned to provide my escort were none other than Clayton and Pavel, who before we left, guided me without a word to where Sister Carnelia was resting. I talked with Sister Carnelia, who had awoken for a short interval, but as I got up to leave, she reached out her dainty hand and said to me, Before you go, I want you to tell, I want to tell you my real name. It's Ian. Ian Selnet. I took her unblemished hand in mine and gripped it firmly as I expressed my appreciation for what she had done. And today, now three years later, I stood staring at her name once again, but this time, printed on the page of an Imperial Chronicle, Ian Selnet. Below those printed characters ran the few lines of an unembellished article. Yesterday, a corpse was discovered in an urban area of the capital just before dawn. The body was found to be covered with multiple stab wounds. The departed, in life, had been involved in charitable work and brought salvation to many afflicted souls in various regions throughout the land. As I read the last line, I envisioned the deceased figure of the Sister Carnelia lying motionless upon a darkened street. Yet, despite the blood-stained face that I envisioned in my mind, I saw her as she rested in peace, a gentle smile crossing her face and vindicated of any transgressions in life. As I rolled up the copy of the magazine in hand, I brushed my hand lightly across the shining bracer emblem pinned on my chest. Almost two years had passed since I converted to my new line of work, which Sister Carnelia had so graciously recommended to me, and finally, I had even become used to my, using my real name. Toby, came the whisper of Sister Carnelia as it resurrected in my ears. Now known only as Toby, I pressed my forehead up against the cold, clouded window of the passenger car, the refulgent eyes of Sister Carnelia shining brightly like a carnelian stone, forever ingrained in my memory. In my mind's eye, I watched as her coat sleeves trailed out behind her, and she dashed away into the darkness of my memories. Opening my eyes, I gazed out through the window glass, and there, I saw the bleeding rogue-coloured illumination of the Imperial City, as it faded away beneath a heavy white fog. The End